Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's Lockdown Learning 2.0 webinar. This webinar is on cyber exercises and will be presented by Robin McEwen, who is a consultant at Plan B Consulting. If you have a question at the end, please could you raise your hand by clicking the hand icon, which should be on the left of your control panel. We will then select an attendee to ask their question and unmute them. If you are dialing in via phone, please ensure you've entered your audio pin to enable audio. So I will pass you over to Robin to begin. Um, Robin, are you there? Yes, hi everyone. So I'm Robin, a business continuity and crisis management consultant with Plan B Consulting and today I'll be discussing cyber exercises with you. So just to highlight first, these are exercises are aimed at cyber incident response rather than the technical response. I am not a technical expert in cyber in any way. Also, apologies, the um, webcam's not working today. So just to start us off, we'll go through the agenda for today. So we will be looking at the instant landscape, how we can add some realism to exercises. We will then go through a mini cyber exercise on today's webinar. And we will finish off by just looking at some top tips from Plan B Consulting for responding to cyber incidents. So just to jump straight in with incident landscape, um, Travelex, everyone's probably familiar with this cyber attack. So in 2019, Travelex had a significant cyber attack. Their website was taken down and offices in multiple countries had to revert to using pen and paper and manually calculating exchanges. A uh, ransomware gang claimed responsibility for the attack and demanded £4.6 million to release the systems back to Travelex. It took them almost two weeks to turn the systems back online and by that point it was too late and their reputation had also been impacted. A large part of their reputation being impacted was the fact that they put a planned maintenance message on their website instead of communicating what had actually happened and that further impacted their reputation and unfortunately they did go into administration after this. Our next example is Dundee and Angus College. So some people might not be as familiar with this attack, but in February 2020, Dundee and Angus College faced a cyber attack where the criminals tried to extort ransom in exchange for hand and back services. All throughout the incident, Dundee and Angus College, as you can see in the screen, they did put out this was their first tweet. Um, when they found out about it. They communicated all throughout the incident very well on social media. They didn't have access to their system, so it does just highlight that if your website and systems are down, social media is still accessible and it is good to communicate with people and keep up to date. Dundee and Angus did take about 24 hours to respond, but they did provide clear and concise updates regularly to students and staff. Um, students also couldn't access their accounts or any of their work and dates had to be put back for uploading their work so it was good that they kept them up to date for that. So we'll just move on to our realistic inject. So to show this I'm going to show you the platform that Plan B use. So it's a media instant training simulator also known as MITS. So this would be the kind of dashboard page you would see on that. So you can see you've got your share price, your weather, the company name. So this is a demo site um, that we've made up. Um, you've got your news feeds and your Twitter there and um, your map. And then you can also, if you um, want to, you can develop a video. So this one was just a news story saying that somewhere had went on fire and um, just to add that extra bit of realism to it. The next part of MITS, we've got the news page, so you can mimic any news page. So for this one, we use four news, so you can put your banner at the top and then you can add in your messages. So on this one, we've got that they were scrutinised for unethical working conditions and just a story behind it. You can also mimic Twitter and Facebook pages, company websites, etc. So on our Twitter feeds here, you can see that the um, the company themselves has put a statement out saying they're aware, but we've also got BBC News on there and you can see on this BBC News have 10.3 million followers and they've um, released the story about Total Sports. So it just kind of gives you that impression whether you need to respond. If someone only had five followers, you probably wouldn't engage with them. But the fact BBC News has put it out to 10.3 million people, you would probably want to input out a statement to respond to that. For 
cyber incidents in particular. There are these are just images from Google, but you can edit these. So um, if you use them on PowerPoint, you could put up a text box around them, add in your own information just to make it um, more accurate to your organisation. And this would also help just add that extra bit of realism to the exercise. So next we will be moving on to our cyber exercises. So how it's going to work today, there will be polls for each question. Um, for the polls, I'll read the questions out to you and they'll be on the screen. If you can just read through them when it switches to the polls, it'll only give you A, B, C or D. Unfortunately, the character count was too long to include um, all the answers in the polls. So this is our background information. So I'll just give you a minute to read through the information. So thanks, um, I hope everyone's has a chance to read through. Just to highlight the main points, you're a high profile bank um, and you've already had a cyber attack. You've paid out 10 million, it's been reported in the media and you've said that you paid to protect your customers and avoid significant fines from the regulator. The time is now today, Wednesday the 10th of February, it's right now. Um, again, I'll just give you a wee minute to read through the information there. So again, thank you. I hope everyone's had a chance to read through. So just to highlight again, um, you've been locked out again by another ransom attack. They're now demanding 20 million in Bitcoin be paid within 48 hours. The information that was sent with um, your high profile clients who are very private people have been confirmed to be correct. This is also our social media index for this section. So we've got our Twitter here. We can see on Twitter that there is now a hashtag Gringotts Bank. People are talking about the cyber attack on Twitter. And we've also got a news story here which highlights that a couple of days before the attack, there was a news story saying that there had been an increase in cyber attacks. And we've also got a news story from today saying that uh, an inside source has been confirmed that the bank is dealing with another cyber incident and that you've already paid 10 million in ransom. So just to jump into the first question, so would you have paid the first ransom to protect customers and regulate, um, sorry, and limit regulator fines? So I'm just going to launch the poll for this and hopefully it will take you to it. So thank you everyone for your responses. So we've got 13% saying yes and 87% saying no. So firstly, there is no right or wrong answer to this question. It is totally dependent on your organisation's culture and the circumstances surrounding the attack. 
it may be that the information that you've been told you really don't want released so it would benefit you to pay it ransom um sorry it's important to highlight ransoms can be paid but not if it's funding terrorist organization so you really need to do your research into who it is you're paying our second question is when are you going to start informing customers should and should this second ransom now be paid for the 20 million so a immediately and do not pay the ransom b once all appropriate information has been collected and the extent of the attack is known discuss the pros and cons of paying the ransom customers do not need to be informed unless it is likely to be reported in the media do not pay the ransom or d release statements as the information becomes available and pay the ransom straight away so again um i'll give you a few more seconds just to read through that and then i'll launch the poll for you thank you everyone so the main answer there was b which i would say is the correct answer so customers should be informed when the information has been collected and the extent of the attack is unknown it could be useful to post a holding statement if there is a news story i'm um, just saying that you're aware of it and working to investigate it but when you immediately find out about a cyber incident you don't have all the information to tell your customers Again, paying the ransom is dependent on your organisation, but it is beneficial to take the time and discuss whether it would benefit you to pay it or not and discuss the pros and cons of that instead of either paying it straight away or if your company culture is to not pay at all, um, just discuss that and have it noted down somewhere before an incident so you're not taking the time to discuss that on the day when you're under strict time conditions. So this attack, they gave them 48 hours, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that long. Our question three moving on to, so when would you inform the regulator? So immediately within the 72 hour time frame that the ICO provides, as soon as all the information is available or never take the chance, they might not find out. So again, I'll give you a few wee seconds just to read over that yourself before I launch the poll. So just to share the results with you there, the majority are saying within the 72 hour time frame. I would tend to agree with that um, because immediately you're probably not going to know all the information that the ICO needs for you to file the report. So taking the 72 hour time frame, um, you'd have all the information sitting. If you are confident that you have all the information, by all means report it, but do just make sure you take the extra time to ensure you know everything.
And moving on to our question four. So what is the tone of your response and overall media strategy for this cyber incident? So A, customers and their protection are Gringotts Bank's main concern and the media strategy should reflect that. Or B, deny all accusations in the media as there is no tangible proof yet. So I'll give you a few seconds to just read through that and then I'll launch the poll. So thank you everyone again for voting. So I would tend to go with yes, A is the correct answer as stated in the background information of the exercise. Customer protection was Gringotts Bank's main concern and therefore their media strategy should reflect that. With answer B, the chances are if there was a cyber attack, it would come out and someone would take credit for it, whether that was releasing it on a website um, saying that they had your information or if you didn't pay up they could release it to the media so I tend not to um, avoid it until there is proof. So that is the end of our mini cyber exercises. If we were doing this for real, there would be a few more injects in there and some more in-depth questions to really tease out the finer details. But because it's just a webinar and a poll, it's just a wee bit shorter for you today. Following on from the exercise, the next steps would be developing your post-exercise report and completing your follow-up actions. So it is important to record your observations and recommendations for this um, and if there is any action so this could be things like um, discussing whether you pay a cyber ransom having a cyber playbook in place and then you should also review this to make sure in a couple of months time that the, you have either addressed the observations and recommendations and done your actions or that they are in progress so just to finish us up today we've got plan b's top tips for responding so our first top tip is know your organization's crown jewels so this could be your customer data your emails any personal records you hold on your employees one important thing to note is that if you were a high profile organization and you were cyber attacked if they got your personnel files they could start targeting like people in your c-suite if they didn't agree with the company direction etc so in the past, Sony had emails released and they weren't saying such nice things about celebrities. Does your organisation have any embarrassing emails like that? Are you fully aware of all the information your organisation holds and you're not going to be surprised? It is important if not already have your information categorised and do try and make sure you understand completely what would be at risk if it was to get released. Our second tip is pre-incident decide whether your organisation would either pay or negotiate with ransom so you can hire in external companies that can negotiate for you and um, decide if this is for you or not for you and um, again it will be completely dependent on your culture but there might be a circumstance where you believe that paying a ransom would benefit you but also keeping that in mind um, about the funding terrorist organisations, if it is a terrorist organisation that has attacked you. And our third tip is cyber playbooks. So there are cyber playbooks for technical recovery and 
cyber playbooks for how the crisis management team would respond in an incident. So this is more for how the crisis management team would respond in an incident. So you could have, for instance, if it was a ransomware attack, if it was a phishing attack, what information they'd stolen, what your steps would be, and have that documented out so that on the day of a cyber attack, you have a solid plan in place and you know you have to do X, Y, and Z quickly, you know who to contact, etc. So thank you for listening, anyone. I got through that a wee bit quicker than um, I expected. Does anyone have any questions? Thanks for that, Robin. Um, that was great. Um, we're just waiting for some questions to come in now. I don't think we've had any just yet. Um, but if you do have a question for Robin, if you could just raise your hand um, using the hand icon, uh, which should be on the left of your control panel, and then we can unmute you and you can ask your question to Robin. And um, we'll just leave it a couple of minutes just to see if anyone has any questions. Oh, it looks like we have a question. I think from Melody, is it? Melody. Hi there. Um, it's just really a, a little bit more about understanding. When you said one of the questions, uh, I think it was the first question, would you have paid the first ransom um, back when they did the first attack initially? And that there was no right or wrong answer because we my organization's always been under the understanding that we wouldn't pay any ransoms just because you leave yourself as low-hanging fruit for the next attack that they decide to do and then possibly the one after that and so on um but you said obviously it's not a good idea to pay um a perpetrator if they are funding terrorism and that it's a good idea to do your research on who they are my question is how would you know who those people are that are demanding the ransom so i don't know whether that information would be available um you know so that you could make that decision are they funding terrorism because if they are then you know we wouldn't want to pay anything to them um but I, I don't understand how we would know that information or what tips you could give us to research who the perpetrators are yeah, no problem. So I think you've highlighted a, a really important point there. There are pros and cons to paying a ransom. One of the cons of paying a ransom is if you do pay that, you're going to be on a list and people are going to know that you've paid up before. It is also for people that pay them. It can be because they need the information back and they couldn't risk it being released. So that, that is one of the main points why people do pay. For finding out if it's a terrorist organisation, I think you'd usually use an external company and they'd be able to research it further unless you have a kind of well-developed cyber department that can do that for you. Um, but taking mm. into account thinking if there is external people you could pull in to just double check um, because it can obviously land you in a lot of trouble if you, if you were to pay the ransom. Yeah, do they do they tend to make themselves known then, these cyber criminals? Will they often announce who they are that are doing the attack? So Is there it, are some of them that in, do. In my, sorry. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, in, in my past experience, people tend to claim that they've done them after the event. You know, it could be anonymous that are claiming to do one or somebody else. But I, I don't know if we would know at the time of the attack who the actor who the people actually are that are doing it. Yeah, so there are some organisations that actually have websites and they put the that they've attacked you up and um, oh. sometimes they um sorry I'm trying to think of the right words like auction the information. So if you decide not to pay, they can put it up as an auction for people to buy it. Um, oh, and kind of get them that way. So some people do claim responsibility for it and you would know and you'd be able to find out quite easily that way. But in the reverse, yeah, you're right, someone could say, oh, it was me that done it, but it wasn't. Yeah. OK, thank you. No problem. Have we got any other questions? I don't think. I don't think we've got any other questions. Oh, we have one in this question box here from Stephen Austin. Um, what was the name of the media simulation portal you referenced? 
Yeah, so it's Plan B Consultants Own Media Incident Training Simulator. It is on our website, but if you want more information on it, um, you can email myself or Plan B or um, BCT as well. Um, my email address is just Robin at Plan B Consultant, and I can provide you with more information for that. Okay, I think that's all the questions that we have. Um, so thank you, Robin, again for um, taking the time to deliver this session. I um, hope everyone enjoyed it, um, and we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you.